Hi, David. Thank you so much for taking the time out for today's episode. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Yeah, doing absolutely well right now, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we've, <laughs> we've, been be. we've been trying to set up this, uh, this interview for, uh, for a couple of weeks, but, yeah, you know, yeah. life gets COVID. in the way sometimes, right? Yeah, especially in the COVID time, you know, I feel yeah. like I'm not going to get COVID, but after like two years, I finally got them. But the good thing is, like, I got all of my vaccination booster job as well. So it didn't get that worse. Uh, we right. thought uh, about it. So, yeah, we're getting better now. Slightly got Okay, off. good. That's good. But I'm super excited for this episode. And, yeah, learn more about you and your journey. So you actually achieved a lot of things during that time, like you being in a movie, so which is going to release soon as well. So I right. like to congratulate on that as well. Before yeah, we, we, were, get started. We, were just, we were just talking about that, uh, the yeah. film Moonfall. With yeah. uh, with Holly Berry is uh, is, uh, is it's, it's about as we're doing this it's about to come out in about in about a week and a half but you can you yeah. can look for me my little uh, my little cameo you'll find it I think. <laughs> yeah I hope everyone go and watch the movie and yeah they can see you as well so yeah today's topic what we're going to discuss where you have like lots of experiences which is like a communication and we're going to talk about like how to communicate better. Uh, it could be like a professional way or like it could be like in you know, a day-to-day life we have to communicate every single person uh, right now we're doing the podcast show you're communicating with each other in the same way like uh, I was downstairs before like I was communicating with my wife and even my baby child who doesn't understand nothing but still I'm communicating with it so yeah it's a really interesting topic and uh, really yeah, and your, 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 baby, your baby is just your baby is just learning how to communicate now. Yeah. I think it's you know uh, I, I, you're seeing how communication develops on on a super super fundamental uh, level. You know how yeah. does your baby tell you when when it's uh, when it's hungry or you know needs a needs a diaper change? It's 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 very interesting to watch a baby learn to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. They don't use words. They cry. They laugh and showing the way like how they're feeling. But right now, mine wants starting calling me Papa and everything. So, yeah, we get we getting there. So before yeah. we jump into like the topic, uh, my audience and me would love to know who David is, how you got started with your career, and how he into like uh, acting, also like a uh, voiceover, and even a uh, radio show host as well. And right, right now, you are coaching other people how to be better communicator and like uh, coaching business right. owners and everything. So like a uh, Let's go back and tell me, like, uh, who you was before you know, like, David Taylor. Like, how is your how, childhood how, like? Uh, Russell, how far back? You want to go back to my Goo Goo Gaga stage, learning how to communicate, or? Uh... Not, not, <laughs> that, not that far. I, like, we can I don't, go from, I don't like, even remember that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember that stuff. But no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a broadcaster. I'm based in, uh, in Montreal, Canada. I'm a broadcaster. Uh, I've been working in broadcasting for almost 40 years. Uh, I spent a lot of that time uh, working on the radio, uh, and another another part of that uh, that time working on on uh, the uh, on the television as well. I I, I started you know uh, in in my I guess in my in my teens I was uh, I was dest I felt destined to become a musician. I mean I'm still involved with with music as you can see behind yeah, me. Yeah. Um, but at one point I I kind of realized that. Um, there wasn't a lot of money in music mm -hmm. uh, and decided that I needed to start uh, looking at an, another thing that, uh, that I was interested in. And that was in, in media or right. in communicating. Uh, when I was working with the band, I was, I was the drummer in the band. Um, I was the one responsible for the marketing of the different shows that we were doing. And I really enjoyed doing that. I yeah. like the idea of, of talking on the radio, of, of, uh, of being on, uh, being on the television and uh, communicating ideas that way. So I pivoted back in the, <laughs> back in the eighties and started studying uh, media and, uh, and, and communications. I went through, through college uh, and, uh, and university here in Montreal, like Concordia University. It's the oldest communication school here in, uh, in Canada. And I got out back in, I think it was like 1990. Uh, and, and right away I started working in, uh, in radio and music radio. Right. Um, it's somewhere in, somewhere in there, I got hired to do uh, a voiceover, uh, a cartoon voiceover, an animation voiceover. 
Um, and then I started getting, you know, jobs for, for commercials and for, for educational narrations and that kind of a thing. So in 1994, I decided to officially start my business, David Tyler Communications, mm -hmm. registered. Uh, in 1994, I, and I launched my website and I started uh, uh, created demos of my voice and started yeah. uh, connecting uh, with, uh, with with people across Canada, the United States, and and around the world to start selling my wares as a, as a as a voiceover talent. Um, and in uh, and I and I did very well, <laughs> uh, and I was on many t television stations and many radio stations. Um, around the world uh, the same way that I am now. But in, in 2000, I decided that it was, I spoke with my accountant yeah. uh, and we decided that it was beneficial for me to become a, a corporation. So the, the, the laws are different here in Canada. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I under, as, as a corporation, I had uh, some, some uh, tax benefits um, as well as uh, some protection uh, yeah. If somebody would, you know, wanted to sue me for for whatever reason, there's no real there was no real reason for for somebody to sue me. So it was a better uh, idea to uh, to become um, a, a corporation. In 2008, um, I left full time radio because up until then I was doing essentially a nine to five job, uh, yeah. Yeah. working in radio and doing and running my business. Um, which was taking up a lot of time and my kids were were small at the time also so i wanted to have some more time to to spend with uh, with my family mm -hmm. um and and it didn't take long for me to 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 ramp up my my voiceover business uh yeah. to the point where you know i wasn't i wasn't missing any any uh any revenues things were going well but right. at the same time in in 2008 uh, I decided to to branch off and i started to, um, uh, helping small businesses market themselves themselves based on what I'd learned in university, what I'd learned while working in in the media and what I learned myself while uh, yeah. while marketing my my own business. So I, I kind of branched off in, in in that direction. And you kind of mentioned it before also um, that as as a voice actor about um, I think it was in 20, 2012. So about about 10 years ago, yeah. I started uh, coaching other voiceover talent. So my my company is kind of it it's 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 spread out, but it's all still within uh, within the same kind of within the same field of communication yeah. or communicating. And uh, and what I did last year is uh, started another branch, taking kind of everything that uh, that I've learned over the last uh, four decades. Uh, to start speaking about it, uh, yeah. to start helping people, helping professionals be better communicators based on on uh, on on all the information that uh, uh, that I that I've uh, that I've collected over the years. Um, so my the, the the new venture is called David Tyler Speaks. Uh, okay. You can you can go to the website davidtylerspeaks.com and you can learn some more about that. But uh, but I'm going to be working with with companies. Uh, with associations, with corporations, to help the the, the managers, to help the the uh, the, the C suite uh, executives yeah. to communicate uh, better. Better, yeah. yeah. And that is really important, isn't it? Like in the business world right now, it's all about communication. The more you communicate, the more revenue we can generate. The business can be known because of the communication. Like if we can see, like Elon Musk. Because his personal brand, he didn't really have to spend anything on marketing for selling Tesla and right. building one of the uh, most expensive uh, company in the world right now. In right. I, 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 I believe, Russell, I, I believe that that all success is based on your ability to connect. Yeah. Uh, what, one, of, one of the things that, uh, that I've seen that I've noticed other people and, and companies uh, uh, do and have been doing for for decades is they feel that just by simply communicating mm. they're going to have success but what what i say is uh, that we need to stop communicating and start connecting when we focus on connecting or connection yeah uh, that's how we're going to uh, move from you know just being where we are to move into being uh, uh, more successful. So stop communicating and start connecting. I feel that uh, that connection yeah. is the ultimate goal of any kind of communication. If it's if it's a one on one communication like we're having right now, yeah. uh, it's it's about connecting. We're connecting. I'm sharing information with you. You're sharing information with me. We're creating a 
a, a connection or, or I'm creating a connection with your audience who are, are listening to me now. So I'm sharing yeah. some personal information about who I am so that that hopefully people in the in your audience uh, will feel uh, connected with me. It's it's uh, and it's the exact same principle if you're if you're running an advertising campaign on the radio yeah. or, or the TV or if you're if you're doing a print ad. I, I think people still do uh, do print ads. Yes, the point of the, the point of those communications is to create a connection. So if if you're if you're trying to uh, to communicate, think beyond just communicating. Stop mm -hmm. the communicating and start connecting. Find ways to connect. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on this because we are running a marketing agency ourselves. So it's all about content, and the content is comes. It's not about selling the product. It's about like how we can find the connection between the products or services we are selling for the, each individual. Then we can see that like uh, people are purchasing it. Like we can sell same kind of T-shirt, advertise it on Facebook or YouTube or Google, but you have to like have certain things attached to it, how they connect it. If, if, if uh, a woman buying it for uh, her husband or partner, you have to have like in a way communication, like this is the something best thing to buy for your partner. It, it's not just an only T-shirt. The T-shirt is just the product itself, but you have to have like some kind of meaning to it. And yeah, like you mentioned, you have to have like a connection. Without the connection, like so many people are advertising and marketing and get not getting like any kind of return because they're not connecting well with the audience they're targeting. And it is really important. Uh, either it could be it's a business or the personal life. If you're not connecting with your spouse or your partner, there is, is no depth of love. There is no depth of connection. And mm. it, it is really important. It's not like how you're talking. It's about how deep you're talking, how you care about the other person or not. Even though we're having the same conversation, it's about how much I uh, care about you, how much I think like uh, in deeply inside I'm listening to you, not just like uh, just going all, all over my head because I'm listening to you. That's why I'm replying back to you. It's connection is there. It's not just exactly. the communication. Communication exactly. could be like you saying something else and I'm saying, saying something else. So right. uh, tell us more about like how we can be like an effective communicator well, uh, in professional life or like personal life. I've, I've actually I've actually narrowed it down into uh, into a principle. I call it mm -hmm. the nice principle. It, you know, in, in Canada, well, around the world, Canadians kind of have the, the reputation of being nice all the time yeah. uh we try we try to be nice but but i call it the i call it the nice principle it's an acronym n i c e so uh if you want to create a, a a better connection if you want to create a stronger connection you need to be nice so the n of the nice principle is to be natural in your tone of voice and the way that you present yourself so okay. you know uh, be be natural speak as if you would would normally speak because mm -hmm. you know there are some people who will suddenly start speaking like this and that that's not that's not a very natural way of speaking this is nice you know uh way a nice tone that i'm that i'm speaking with you yeah. uh yeah. with with uh with a nice uh, vibration to to my voice uh and, and and it's not just about about my voice but the way that that you that the way that you present yourself be natural I didn't come on here today wearing a clown suit with a with a red nose because that wouldn't that wouldn't be natural. This is this is a natural way for uh, for me to uh, to be. So the, the the first part of the principle is to be natural in your tone of voice and the way that you uh, that you uh, present yourself. Yeah, yeah. The second the second part of the principle, the I, is to be intellectually and emotionally intimate. Mm -hmm. Be intimate. Don't be afraid to share um you know something something of your past something that uh, something that happened to you because mm -hmm. as soon as you share something on 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 an intimate level that way you're going to open up a door you're going to become um you're going to become more open to the person that uh, that you're speaking with and also intellectually yeah be intimate so share something you know i had this i had this thought the other day russell etc cetera, etc cetera, and, yeah. and and continue on like that so find a way to be uh, intellectually and emotionally intimate. Then right. the C of uh, of the nice principle uh, to create a stronger connection. The C is to find commonalities. You know mm -hmm. what 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 commonalities do you have uh, with the with the with your communication partner? Uh, and it's not just like oh I like red apples too, 
it's like, no, you know, it's funny that, that you're talking about red apples because, because my grandfather, actually now I'm going back to the eye, the intimate part, my yeah. grandfather used to have a, an apple orchard. And when I was a kid, I used to, I used to love going, walking through the field and, and picking those red apples. So, so that's pretty cool that we, that we both like red apples. Find yeah. commonalities uh, with, the, with your communication partner. And then, and then the E, which I think is probably uh, the most important, the E is to have empathy. Be empathetic with your uh, communication partner. Now, there, there's, a real, there's a big difference between um, empathy and sympathy. Uh, there's right. a big difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is uh, when you share the feelings uh, of another, but empathy is when you understand the, uh, the feelings of, of another. It was, uh, it was um, uh, Dr. Brené Brown who did, a, who did a paper. Actually, there's a YouTube video uh, right, of Dr. Right. Brené Brown. I think, I think it might have. Uh, I think it might have been a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. But if you go to YouTube and you shoot uh, and you uh, search for Brené Brown, empathy versus sympathy, I think you'll. I think you're going to find the video. Um, but, but she talked about the four uh, key steps of of showing empathy. I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, the first one is perspective taking, or right. putting yourself in in someone else's shoes. That's that's empathy. Uh, staying out of judgment and listening. Um, and the third, the third is, uh, recognizing emotion in another person that, uh, that you may have, you know, that you may have, have felt before. Yeah. And then you need to communicate that you recognize that emotion. So, uh, the, 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 the fourth principle in my nice principle is empathy. Be empathetic with your, with your, uh, communication partner. So N I C E be nice and yeah. you will start connecting. You'll go beyond communicating. And you'll start connecting. Now, the the nice thing, pardon the pun, about about this this principle that uh, that I've that I've created is that it works for one on one communication, but yeah. it also works if you're if you're if you're marketing to somebody, if you're if you're running a, a commercial uh, or or building a web page, if you are if you are nice in that respect as well, you're mm -hmm. also going to start connecting with uh, with your audience. Uh, yeah. So this is a great way, like a simplified. We, we take as a communication, you just like a communication, you broke it down in, in, in steps like the, how actually working. So most of the times why we have like a, some people like a introvert and they not really good on the communication. So what will be like their steps to talk more? Or, and for also an introvert. Like, yeah, introvert. Well, I, I think that I think that there, that uh, I mean we're now I think we're going to kind of get into the psychology. I'm not a psychologist, yeah. uh, but we're getting more into the psychology of of uh, of communication. And I'm putting together uh, a talk right now about how to use your voice to uh, to uh, to create change. Mm -hmm. And and one of the elements of of that uh, that talk is the psychology of 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 speaking. Right. Um, because some people, like you say, are, are introverted uh, and they need to uh, find a way to get past that introversion uh, to uh, to be able to communicate uh, uh, their ideas. So it comes down to uh, a, a deeper emotional uh, level to understand why is it that you are afraid to open up or afraid to communicate? Perhaps, again, I'm not a psychologist, but perhaps yeah. as a child, you were told to be quiet and sit down. That if you had an opinion, you were shouted down uh, and you were told that you were insignificant and you were unimportant. Um, and because of those early stages of, of development, yeah. uh, of developing your communication uh, ability, you were shut down. So you feel that you don't have the, uh, the right to speak when everybody has the right to speak, the right yeah. to communicate. So if, if somebody's if somebody's introverted, again, I have to say it again, I'm not a psychologist, uh, but but if somebody is really introverted and they they really want to get out of that, uh, you know, you might want to consult with uh, with a professional just to kind of understand why is it uh, that you are you're not capable of 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 opening up. Um, mm. in that way. I mean, I, I, I was, I, I was on the radio, uh, live on the radio for, uh, for 25 years. And so for me, it's, it's difficult to, uh, 
it, it's I, I I empathize. Yeah. But it's but it's difficult for me uh, because I'm I'm just able to 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 open up and 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 speak the, the way that uh, the way that I was brought up. My father was. Uh, was a, a was a professor at uh, at McGill University, yeah. and he encouraged me to speak. He encouraged me to understand, uh, to to explain myself if I have an idea. He encouraged me to do that. So it so for me it's it's difficult to understand uh, because I would just turn the microphone on and I and I would be speaking with uh, you know uh, my audience of of uh, four hundred thousand people. Yeah. Um, but I empathize with with people that have that difficulty. But I believe it's also possible to, to move beyond that with the right kind of help. And again, I'm not a psychologist. Yeah, because I have my own experiences because I was like an introvert. And with my own experiences, like you mentioned, something happened in your childhood that could bring you to being there. And I think that was the, my case. Like I was extrovert at the beginning when I was like five, six years old, I would speak to everyone. But since I'm going to like a school, like a, a second year, uh, I got bullied by a few of my friends, now become my friends. But that time was really, really hard. And since then I've gone quiet. Um, I wouldn't speak to anyone because all the time thinking about that, and even to my friends and family members or cousins, I wouldn't speak to no one. And that gone for like quite a while, about six, seven years before I start opening up again. Then I lost both of my parents age of 13 and went through a depression and everything. Then age of 16, 17, I moved to um, UK when I was like 16. Then again, English wasn't my first language, again, bullying. And also like I couldn't communicate better with like my classmates and everyone because and they're they taking like a fun out of me every time I'm saying a, a single word, black like pronunciation is not right the way they talk because my I come from like a different country and everything and uh, then it's stopping me and then again i've gone back to like being an introvert then i had to make the changes uh then uh, i was forced to do that because i'm becoming a primary school teacher so i have to teach kids and i have to open up like if you're then i went to a teacher's training where it really actually helped me being a, like an extrovert slowly slowly and i actually did that and i think that this really improved but right now, like I'm talking to a stranger every single day and I'm connecting well with everyone. I'm telling my stories and everywhere I go, I, I moved to a new town about six, seven months now, already talking to everyone. I'm going to mosque and even the person, uh, I don't know them, like I greet them first. I introduce myself. So I'm not introvert anymore. But, and that's, but, that's but so tell me, how, how, did you, how did you move past that? So what, I, yeah. just want to, I just want to point out that sometimes, yes, psychological, but it's also environmental. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Kind of the environment that you're in. But how did you move past that? So I'll say environmental, and I got some kind of help from my uh, college teacher. So she was like, uh, don't care about what other people are doing. You focus on like what you need to be doing. You need to be a better communicator to stay in this country. You have to speak up. If you don't talk English, then your English is not going to get better soon. You have to go through that critic, uh, criticize and everything. So certain words you're not gonna feel comfortable with, and your pronunciation not gonna be right, and people gonna laugh at you. That's totally fine. Just learn from it and move on. So that was like my first step, I think. Then psychologically, like in staying in this country, I have no other choice. I have to communicate English. I can't speak in Bangla, my own language. So I was forced to do that. Then after more, I'm doing it. The more I'm getting courage and more I'm getting better and my fear is going down as well in the same time then after like I had no other choice like I wanted to be accountant but my grades and everything come from Bangladesh it doesn't really apply in here so they wouldn't allow me to go on my accountancy and being an accountant course so I had only option like uh, either I have to be a health and social care worker which I didn't want to and then I have another choice being a primary school teacher first primary teaching assistant, then primary school teacher. Then I got a job, primary teaching assistant. And then that's like, again, forced me to do the job. I have to teach children in a small group, uh, 10, 15 uh, children. So that's like it boosted up. The children wasn't like uh, too old. And then were like uh, 13, 14, they're like five, six years old. So I was comfortable, even though my pronunciation is not right, but still I get by because they're not taking a joke because they are freshly in a school and a year one 
children. So that gives me confidence. The year goes by, my English is getting improved and I'm getting more confident. So I'll say like it's environmental rather than psychological. I've been forced mm -hmm. to do certain things. And then right now it's just automatically happening. So, yeah. so, so what you're saying is that you got better at communicating because you had to. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a, a necessity. necessity. I, I think we, yeah. we were talking about your 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 baby earlier. Um, that on on a funda fundamental on a fundamental level, we communicate to survive. Yeah. If your baby was not able to communicate that uh, that it was hungry, it wouldn't survive. I'm talking yeah. about we're talking about super basic level. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think what you're saying is that you became a better communicator. Uh, you you got out of your shyness because you had to. There yeah. was no other option. You had to move forward, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there was no like a, like again a consultation from someone or something like you mentioned, like again a therapy or like a go psychologic, a physiologist or someone uh, because. I didn't really know that till like the last six, seven years, this something exists, you can hire a coach or you can go to such a person like who can help you or uh, it can guide you through like your steps. Right now I'm talking to life coaches, consultant, uh, psychologist, and they can actually help you break through your pattern like what we've been over the years and do something better with your life. Uh, I, I didn't actually know that. So all of them changes happen with me like, a, environmental and i'm like forced to do that because out of necessity so i have no other choice to do and i have to do this even though starting a business is like a, i had no other option to start this business and get into business because i wasn't the person i can stay in a job for a long period of time i've, I've probably been in a job longest time in a job is like three years uh, age between 17 uh, age between 16 and 19 and I started my business age of 19 ever since like I've never been on a job and I, I can't even think about it right now if I'm thinking about like uh, for certain reason like on the beginning of my career my business uh, when I'm thinking about I'm going to go bankrupt or there is not enough money to pay off bills I'm double shifting like I'm working 18 19 hours sometimes 24 hours I don't sleep till two three nights and solve the problem what I'm having rather than going back to job when I think about job it just makes me weak <laughs> and I can't really do that so I have to be forced to do certain things even though like a phone call we mentioned I was doing the cold calling uh like a three four years back when I started my marketing company I needed to get more clients I couldn't hire someone because it's a one-man show and I needed to get to my business to six figure so I, I never done the cold calling and I was forced to do that because I have no other option to do that. I'm trying to do like LinkedIn messages and everything because I'm new and I didn't have lots of connection. It takes time. Probably going to take six months time to build it like a following. I just recently opened a new account. So I'm not going to get ROI straight away. So what's the ROI return? I watch a bunch of YouTube videos and everything. You become a cold caller. <laughs> so this is my fear cripples in. Like, how am I going to communicate someone trying to sell them on the phone? That person never seen me and never heard of me. So yeah, again, out of necessity, I have to make the change. Right. Yeah. But I, I think that, I mean, in terms of, in terms of phone sales, it's about, it is about creating a connection. Yeah. A yeah. connection with, um, uh, a, a connection with the person that you're speaking with and, and speaking with them right away. I mean, you can't, you, if, if you were going to be doing a cold call, you can't say, hi, how are you today? Yeah. Because that's not, you know, that's not going to work. You need to do a little bit of research of the person that you're calling beforehand. Again, I, I'm not, I'm not a salesperson, but, but using the, 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 the communication skills that I have, yeah. get some information about the person that you're, that you're trying to, uh, to cold call. Yeah. Um, and not, not in the, not in the creepy <laughs> way, if you know what I mean, but, uh, you know, but understand, uh, a little bit about the person, if they, if they happen to, you know, to like a certain, uh, football club, it's because you've researched them on LinkedIn, they like a certain yeah. football club, you know, you could, you could, you could use that. Uh, or if you happen to, uh, you know, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, if you, if you've done some, some research on them and, and you know that they like, uh, they, they, they own a certain breed of a dog or mm -hmm. whatever, the, whatever their likes, but find a way to, uh, connect with them, find a way to create that connection, uh, yeah. before yeah. you try to, to, to sell anything. Uh, my principle is to give before you get. If you're cold mm. calling, you need you need to give them something first. Yeah, before, value. 
or you get something. Uh, for me personally, I don't. I don't use the. I don't use the telephone for cold calls. I'll use. Uh, I'll use uh, uh, email. Uh, so I may send. Uh, I may send a link. Hey, here's something that. Uh, here's an article that I that I saw, and I think that I think that you're really going to like it. Um, or 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 um, uh, again, using some information that that you've you've gathered uh, um, uh, before you make your phone call. I don't, yeah. I don't know how many I'm, I don't know how much time you have for research before you do a phone call uh, but I mean you should take at least at least 15 or 20 minutes before before you make a phone call to find out about uh, the person that you're going to be speaking yeah with. when I was like a rookie a cold caller I didn't make any research then eventually later on I found out like after doing it over a month or something like seeing no results then I did some research uh, watched a lot of bunch of YouTube videos and that really actually helped I did some research. And also yeah. go to the straight point, like why I'm actually calling them and is right. there any needs to qualify them, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, there is no right. point with me pitching my services. Do we actually need it? And am I speaking to the right person? Why I need yeah. to? If I'm talking to their assistant, make no sale. So right now, we do appointment setting for our clients and everything using LinkedIn and also like a cold email. So it's, we don't pitch anything till like having the after seven or eight conversation we need to understand them they need to understand us then we see if there any create any interest are they interested in the kind of services we're providing or not then we ask like do they have any kind of budget or etc before we actually teach them so yeah if you directly a lot of people are spam us like even though myself every single day one guy all the day without any research he sent me a facebook dm or do you need any help with like finding a uh, law client I was like why then he goes like I know an attorney I'm like no <laughs> don't look at my profile like I'm an agency owner marketing yeah. agency owner why are you trying to yeah. sell me like a, a attorney thing so yeah. right now is I think like people are spamming everyone everywhere yeah no I've, I've I've had a few of those in the last little while as everybody's everybody's you know starting to pivot and trying trying to find new ways to 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 make revenue uh yeah. that yeah. that is starting to happen a lot i mean you're, we're talking we're talking about um we're talking about phone calls and cold yeah. calling but yeah. specifically ab about phone calls i think that um and, and sent people sending you dms uh i've i've always said that uh the way we communicate communicates who we are how we communicate mm -hmm. communicates who we are some people will will text you some people will send yeah. you an email some people will call you uh some people will write a letter a handwritten letter some people will will type a letter but the way that we communicate communicates uh communicates who we are and yeah. if you if you think about if you think about the phone call actually if you think about any kind of a communication um only seven percent of any kind of a communication is about the words that we're using only seven percent well, Fifty-five percent of that is body language, right. and guess what? The other thirty-eight percent is tone of voice. The tone of voice, yeah. So if you are, if you're only doing, if you're only making a a phone call, you lose fifty-five percent of that message. Fifty-five percent of that message is is uh, is gone, and the emphasis is going to be on the tone of uh, of your voice and if and if you let me i've got i've got four tips maybe a fifth maybe a bonus tip but i have uh, four tips for for you uh to to be uh, to be a, a better communicator and again this is this is all based on working on the radio because on the radio yeah. nobody nobody sees you right <laughs> yeah so yeah. We're, we're going back to going back to that this is this is a very simple thing and i'm doing it right now if you want to sound brighter raise your eyebrows when you're speaking on the phone rate yeah. well i'm doing it now but anyway i always do it i'm always very excited but <laughs> but but one of one of my four, the first of the four tips is is to raise your eyebrows when you raise your eyebrows you sound brighter not smarter you, maybe <laughs> maybe you will but but uh, when you raise your eyebrows you sound brighter because what happens, kind of like a drum, don't forget I used to be a drummer. Yeah. Like yeah. a drum, when you tighten the skin on the drum, you the, 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 the tone of the drum gets higher. And in the same way, when you tighten the drum or the, 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 the skin on your, on skin, your face, yeah. when you tighten it, you end up sounding brighter. As opposed to sounding, you know, uh, I'm going to try to, you know, if I'm, not, if I'm not raising my eyebrows, 
you sound kind of, you know, muffled and, you know, and, and not bright. But as soon as you as soon as you raise your eyebrows, you actually you actually start to speak in a, in a different way. So that's that's my first tip. When you're cold calling the content, that's not that's not for me. That's the seven percent. But the but the other part, because of my uh, my uh, my voice background yeah. uh, and the fact that I'm a voice coach, raise your eyebrows and you're, you're going to sound brighter. And the second tip is to smile. When you smile as you're speaking, again, it creates that that tightness in uh, in your face and you do sound brighter and people can hear a smile. If you're if you're not if you're not smiling, if you're speaking on the phone and you're, and you're not smiling, people can tell. People can tell. There's also there's also something that happens when you do smile, when when all those muscles in your face start to start to tighten up and 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 make you smile, you actually start to sound more excited. You sound yeah. more more fun. Like, hey, something something is happening. Something is going on. So raise your eyebrows and uh, and, and smile. Uh, the smile creates uh, enthusiasm. And then the other thing is to control your volume when you're speaking on when you're speaking on the phone. Yeah. In the beginning, you in the beginning of the conversation, you want to sound bright and excited. What's going to happen when you start to get uh, still with, with the eyebrows up and still smiling, but then you start speaking in a, in a softer way. You want to know what's going to happen. They're going to actually listen to you closer right? because something <laughs> important is about to happen. And this is, this is, shh, don't tell anybody, but this is a secret. That's what it starts to sound like. So control your volume. Um, you, I mean, if, if you were speaking to somebody and, uh, they, and they were listening to you on a speakerphone, you know, don't, don't um, speak louder. Don't speak louder because that's going to sound like you're very aggressive. Yeah. Let them, they have, there's a control volume on their, on their, on their phone. They can increase the volume. They can increase the volume. So it's important to control your volume, be able to be soft, but also be able to be, to project without yelling, without right. being loud. You're following me so far. I have, I've got yeah, one more tip yeah. for you. <laughs> So far, so good. <clears throat> okay, so the fourth tip when you're on the phone to create a better a better connection with the person that you're talking to is laugh, <laughs> <laughs> laugh, laugh. It's that it's that laugh that makes people go, oh, this there's something interesting that happened. Something interesting is is going on now. This is somebody who's uh, you know uh, about to award me a, a, a trip around the world because he's laughing. He's just he's just so happy. Yeah, there's that happiness, but. One of the things before I would go on the radio, before I would turn the microphone on on the radio, I would always laugh. I just do a <laughs> turn the mic on and and then begin to speak because what happened what happens is that all the muscles in my face get into the proper position and right. when you laugh do do a laugh for me <laughs> <laughs> and feel your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> it tightens up. Yeah, and and when and when those muscles in your abdomen tighten up, it starts to support your voice. So right. that you can project, so that you can control your volume, so that you can be in in that moment. So just before you can do it just before you get on the phone, but laugh <laughs> and feel where you, the muscles on your face are. Feel how your eyebrows have are raised, and feel how now your your abdominal muscles are are holding uh, holding everything up. And you're just gonna you're gonna project more. Uh, you're gonna seem like you're you're really in charge, and and you know what it what it is that uh, that you're talking about. So those are those are my four tips for creating a better telephone uh, conversation. If yeah. you're if you're cold calling, or if, or if you're doing a or if you're doing a, a job interview or whatever, uh, I, I I think that one of one of the more uh, important things these days. Here we are in 2022. Um, I know that that my kids, they're in their 20s. They'll they'll text me. That's how they communicate. They send yeah. they send me a text, but uh, but uh, but people who are in their twenties, maybe people who are in their thirties, aren't used to having this kind of a conversation because all their communication with their friends is is by text, text. Uh, or email. I don't even think that my kids use email anymore. <laughs> so it's really important to understand how to to communicate like this, like through a through a Zoom call, uh, and what's important. The, uh, the the your 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 tone of voice and your body language you need to understand those things so I, I think it's I think it's really important um, that that people start learning how to 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 be better communicators can I mention the the uh, the, the PDF that I have that you can download 
uh, yeah, from my yeah. website. It's it's how to be a master communicator. Sure, Nine sure. tips to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to being a better communicator uh, in the office. If, if uh, they go to davidtylerspeaks.com, they can download that PDF. Uh, and there's, there's nine tips in that PDF. Uh, and wow. it's, 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 it's free to download. So just if they go to davidtylerspeaks.com. The, the, oh, oh, the final tip. I forgot about the final tip. I don't know if you, can you see this? Can you see this right here behind me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, but, but people who can't see whatever the, the right behind me, I, I have a, a, a recording booth. This is a booth where, where I do all of my, uh, all of my voiceover work for, for different TV stations and radio stations uh, around the world. Yeah. It's important when you're making a phone call to do it in a quiet place where there's no, where there's no a actual distractions or, around you. Yeah. But also at the same time where it's it's quiet. Not everybody can can ha have a booth like this when they go to make a phone call. Uh, but find a place where you're not going to be distracted by things going on around you, uh, and definitely where there's not any any noise uh, to to interfere with the with your communication with the the person you're on the phone with. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I really oh, so, those are my tips. I hope you yeah. can use them, Ralph. Yeah, I'm going to use it for my podcasting. You know, I don't do any cold calls anymore, but I can definitely laugh. use it for laugh. my... <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yeah. It changes yeah. everything. Yeah. It changes everything. Yeah, definitely going to start using those. Yeah, so we're running out of the time for this podcast. It was like a great pleasure you coming to this uh, podcast show and giving our audience lots of tips. Even from myself, I learned a lot from you as well. Cool. So, Thanks for the invitation. I appreciate it. You're most welcome. So yeah, those who's listening, if they want to work with you or learn more about you, how they can find you, where's the best place to reach out? Well, they could they could send me an email to david at davidtyler.com. Yeah. Uh, they can learn more about uh, my my speaking business uh, and coaching business at davidtylerspeaks.com. So t Tyler is T-Y-L-E-R. For some reason here in, uh, in Quebec, uh, yeah. Yeah. Most often, people are, are, are misspelling my name. I, I don't understand why, but it's David, <laughs> D-A-V-I-D, T-Y-L-E-R, speaks, S-P-A-K-S, dot com. And they can, they can get some more information there for me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing those details. So, David, thank you so much for coming to this show. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And also, your new uh, movie is going to be a great success. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you in there. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Russell. You're most welcome. So that's a wrap, guys. You know how to find David. Go visit his website if you want to work with him or like learn more about him. And also download the PDF he mentioned so you can get some nine tips. So till then, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye.